We all know the struggle. You just beat the game, but now you're somewhere between level 35 and 40 and you don't know what to do next. Well, it's time to grind XP and bust through some in-game content, of course. So these are my best ways to level fast in Borderlands 3. But before we dive too deep into the where, let's take a look at one of the hows. Available to all players with an active internet connection, the Borderlands Science Machine located in Tannis' lab on Sanctuary 3 is a fast and easy way to boost your XP gains. Simply play the Science Machine game by matching as many faces per row to the ones that you see on the left side of the screen. Ideally, you want to get about 1500 points total after beating all of these things. This might take you 15 to 20 minutes at most if you get pretty good at this thing. You can then use these points to buy an XP booster from the machine that will last you for two hours of in-game time. So even if you have to go do something else, just save and quit. And when you come back, the XP booster will pick up with however much time was left on it. Again, this machine is free to everybody that owns the base game. No DLC required, but you do need an active internet connection to access the machine. The next how is a XP boosting item, namely the Moxie's Endowment. Now, assuming you've beat the game, you can actually farm for Moxie's Endowment XP booster pretty easily. Head to the guts of Carnivora on Pandora, and in this area right here, before you hit the Agonizer Arena, you will find Tink Train. Tink Train can drop the Moxie's Endowment and the Wagon Wheel Pistol, both at a 15% drop rate. Ideally, you want to find a Moxie's Endowment that also rolls a passive XP from combat boosting roll at the bottom, but any Moxie's endowment will work. The XP gains from this artifact increase with your level, so a level 35 version will give you less XP gains than a level 50 version, for example. As such, I do recommend waiting until you're up to level 50 before you farm for one. This will put the XP gains from this artifact around about 8%. Now, each character has their own spot that is ideal for XP farming, but I want to give you guys a few options just in case I suggest a piece of content that maybe you don't own. I'm also going to give you guys a level 40 skill tree layout that you can follow, which will not not include the DLC skill trees. That way, if you don't have that DLC that gives the fourth skill tree, you don't have to worry about it. This will optimize your results. And I'm also going to recommend some gear and tell you guys where to acquire it. You can use the timestamps slash chapters to skip to pertinent bits of information for your character that you're playing as at any time. Some of these farms can be done on higher mayhem levels. And I always recommend increasing your mayhem level to 11 when you go to sanctuary to buy weapons or gear, then switching back down to whatever mayhem level is most comfortable for you for the farm that you're doing. Now, let's start things off with Moe's. The most ideal XP farming spot for her is Graveward, located on Eden 6 in the Floating Tomb map. All you gotta do is jump in the arena and immediately enter Iron Bear. Using this build, you can deal massive damage with your Vanquisher rocket pods by shooting Graveward directly in their critical hit spot. Same when they drop their hand down on the platform. You can also hit up the Crazy Earl vending machine on Sanctuary and grab any weapon that gives you Iron Bear active Vanquisher rocket pod damage to increase your damage tremendously just by holding holding that gun in your hand when you enter Iron Bear. Now, if you don't have the Iridium to buy some of them from Crazy Earl, you could also go to Devil's Razor in Pandora and just hit up the vending machines there. You can have your Mayhem set to Mayhem 11. You don't have to worry about enemies. Just go and check the vending machine to see if you can find this anointment on a gun. Now for the gear that I recommend for the class mod, for bossing at least, you want the Minesweeper class mod. This is dropped by Archer Row after doing the Dynasty Diner quest line in Promethea at the Meridian Metroplex. The best weapon I recommend you using is a fire elemental butcher, which you can get by killing Dinklebot at Skywell 27 on Promethea, then take those ludograms to Crazy Earl on Sanctuary and get a butcher. Again, make sure you set your game to Mayhem 11 before you turn in those ludograms, that way you get a Mayhem 11 version of the butcher. You can also use other weapons on Moe's, and honestly, for this XP farm, the most important parts are the class mod and obtaining any weapon that has Vanquisher pod damage on it. Now, the secondary farm spot for Moe's would be the Ruiner at the end of DLC 3, the Bounty of Blood. Same approach approach as with Graveward, a super fast farm, lots of XP, Iridium, and Ruiner can world drop things like the Complex Root, Unkempt Herald, and Flipper, all of which are god tier weapon options for Moe's mains. Also a point to note for doing the Ruiner farm is that if you're on console and saving and quitting is kind of time consuming, this is one of the smallest maps in the game, so saving and quitting loading back into this is actually faster than a lot of other maps. The final farming spot for Moe's would be the Billies in Ambermire on Eden 6, with a save station located just around the corner or up top, Moe's can quickly get to them and kill them with Iron Bear for a fast batch of XP and some decent gear, including the Chaos Assault Rifle. Now on to Zane. For Zane, the best XP farm is the Scrap Trap Nest in DLC 1, the Handsome Jackpot. Zane also benefits tremendously from the Sea and Dead class mod, which is also obtained in this DLC as well. The Scrap Trap Prime actually drops the Sea and Dead quite often, making this a fast way to get one. To reach the Scrap Traps, you will need to have reached the Compactor map during your 
playthrough of the Handsome Jackpot DLC. After beating the Scrap Traps, Scrap Trap Prime will spawn in, kill them, and then continue the story mission. After completing that mission, you can return to this area and farm. I like to run Clone and Drone for XP grinding. The Clone is an excellent way to do damage since it gets Mayhem scaling for damage and allows you to maximize survivability and you can jump from one spot to another for quick getaways. You can also use your clone to get a second wind with this build. Now using this skill tree, your clone will get a copy of whatever weapon you're holding in your hand when you summon him. One of the best options for these early levels of farming before going up into the higher mayhem levels is the hive launcher dropped by Princess Tarantella in the Splinterlands on Pandora. This powerful launcher that got a huge buff is actually excellent for the scrap trap nest as long as you get the corrosive version. The radiation version is great too, but for the scrap traps you want corrosion since that's what they're weak to now while you're in the splinter lands go ahead and drop by road dog and farm up a hellwalker as well it's excellent in the hands of the clone and also in the hands of zane a quick note about why the scrap trap nest is so good you can farm them repeatedly without having to save and quit this obviously makes this a perfect spot for console players especially those on old gen so you can keep farming xp without loading screens simply kill all the small scrap traps up to the point where scrap trap prime appears if your build and gear are strong enough to kill prime then go ahead and do that and hope for the sand deck class mod but if not then don't stress over him instead head to this cargo crate near the opposite end of the arena go out the back and over to the side just like this now wait for a moment and then when you run back into the arena the waves of scrap traps should respawn rinse and repeat at some point the arena might get laggy with all the loot laying around on the ground feel free to do a quick save quit at any point to clean the arena up maybe grab a bunch of loot off the ground and fast travel back over to the mayor's area of the compactor map and sell it for some fast easy cash you can also increase the enemy count in this area even further by activating the cartels event from the main menu and then talking to Maurice to start the quest. This will allow you to score some great cartel loot on occasion like the yellow cake OPQ system needle gun and if you're really lucky a grease trap which is honestly one of the strongest weapons a clone Zane can get. The second best XP farm for Zane in my opinion is the slaughter shaft. This base game arena located at Conrad's hold on Pandora is an optional side quest where you fight waves of enemies and not just regular enemies you fight waves of large groups of badass enemies. So if your build isn't optimized, you could have some trouble here. But again, using the clone and drone build I listed above, you can wreak havoc on the slaughter shaft. Just remember to swap places with your clone often in order to both heal him and yourself. If you want to make things really crazy, you can go farm Agonizer and Guts of Carnivora on Mayhem 6 or higher. Take a strong corrosive weapon with you like the Sandhawk. More on that in just a moment. And farm yourself a Backburner. This is a ridiculously strong launcher. Think Norfleet from Borderlands 2, but more fun and easier to get, at least in my opinion. The final spot for Zane is Kanagawa Jr. and Atlas HQ on Promethea on Mayhem 11. Yes, I know it sounds scary setting your game to Mayhem 11 and just dropping into something, but Kanagawa is notoriously weak to shock damage and Mayhem scaling makes it so you can one-shot him most of the time. Just go to Sanctuary 3 and tip Moxie until she gives you a crit SMG and let Clone have a copy of it. Again, to do this, all you have to do is make sure you have your spec just like I showed above. Hold this in your hand and summon the clone and they will have a copy of your weapon. Drop into Katagawa Jr.'s area, summon your clone. He should one tap Katagawa with the crit, which will give you a nice chunk of XP and more importantly, a chance at one of the best weapons for a clone build, the Sandhawk Sniper Rifle. This Mayhem 6 and higher exclusive drop is a god tier weapon in the hands of the clone. So even if you decide not to do this farm for XP, maybe at least do a few runs, try and land yourself a Sandhawk for your clone and then do one of the other farms for the faster XP gains. For Flash, I like to go offense over defense most of the time. Using this skill tree, you can nearly constantly have your action skill up so you can fade away and deal massive damage. Like most, Flak's best XP farming spot is Grave Word. As soon as you beat the base game, bump your mayhem up to 11 and go to Moxie's bar. Tip her repeatedly until you get a fire element hail assault rifle. The anointment doesn't matter, but if you can get one with fade away active weapon damage, then it's a bonus. Now set your game down to mayhem four or five and use your action skill fade away with gorillas in the mist as your augment and unload on graveward's crit spot you should be able to kill him extremely fast this way if you feel confident in your ability to kill graveward fast then maybe even try bumping up the mayhem to six or eight see if you can still kill him quickly once you find the sweet spot just save and quit reload and kill graveward repeatedly until you hit level 72 at worst this should take like an hour or so to hit max level great weapons for this build include the hellwalker from road dog and splinterlands on pandora the hail from moxie the final option i'll give for Flack is the Proving Grounds themselves. Since they're fast paced and full of enemies, the Proving Grounds are a quick and fun way to gain XP. For Flack with a decent corrosive weapon, the Trial of Discipline and Precipice Anchor is my go-to farm. Along the way, 
you'll have a wide assortment of Malawan enemies to kill, so you might want to bring along a Hellwalker or a Maggie, maybe even farm a Lucian's Call or a Butcher via Ludograms, like I mentioned earlier in the Moe's segment. This farm is not only great for XP, but also for the loot at the end. Now, the Arbalist of Discipline only drops the Friendbot class mod for Flak, and you're almost never going to use that, but the chest at the end can land you some exceptional loot, including legendary class mods and artifacts if you complete the trial quickly enough. And since class mods and artifacts don't have a mayhem level requirement, you can do these on any mayhem level you want so you can speed through it. Last but not least, we have Amara. Now, Amara is actually my favorite Vault Hunter to power level, and you'll see why here in a moment. First, here's the build that I recommend for power leveling around level 40. This build will allow you to phase grasp a bunch of enemies at once, dealing damage to the main grasp enemy will almost always kill all the others and spawn a remnant orb, which will also seek out and wreck another enemy. By specking down into the green tree, we also unlock Amara's corrosive ability and using the tree I showed you will make almost all of your damage have corrosive attached to it, making the main Amara farming spot the scrap trap nest. Now, like I mentioned during the Zane portion, you can easily repeat this XP farm by going up the cargo container ramp and coming back in. So it's excellent for anybody that doesn't want to waste time with saving and quitting and looking at load screens. For Amara, you're going to want two pieces of gear to make this farm even easier. A phase Zerker class mod, which you can get by farming the Hag of Fervor in the Proven Grounds map Sky Drowned Pulpit on Mayhem 1, since class mods don't have a Mayhem level. And you're also going to want to get yourself a Recursion Shotgun. It's dropped by General Tron in Desolation's Edge on Necro Tefeo. This shotgun will ricochet shots between enemies, combined with Amara's Phase Grasp, Ties That Bind, and Stillness of Mind, as well as her Indiscriminate skill. You're talking about a lot of dead scrap traps. Want some proof? Here's me using a level 59 Recursion versus Mayhem 11 level 72 Scrap Traps. The second best Amara farm is going to be the Slaughter Shaft. This is just like farming the Scrap Traps, except I'd recommend swapping your action skill element to fire. You can even respect to this build, but this will require level 45 to hit this many skill points. The reason I showed this build, however, is it has that one point sustainment, which will give yourself a lot of healing. Same approach, phase grasp, recursion, watch everything die. The last option for Amara will be the Proven Grounds. Just like I said before, this is a quick and fun farm with great loot. For Amara, my favorite is Precipice Anchor once again. Obviously, when you're fighting the final boss of the Proven Grounds, you're going to want to use something that does corrosive damage. Even though you can apply corrosive damage with your action skill element, I would definitely recommend using something that actually does corrosive damage as its main source of damage as well. And that's why the Trevenator is also a really good option here. If you guys have any other tips, let me know down in the comment section below. And if I like it, I'll pin it. If this video was helpful to you, then please take a second and smack that like button. Hit subscribe for more Borderlands content. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.